for uh, my first what's in my bag, I went with a classic Cannonball Adderley selection. I'm a saxophone player. Cannonball is uh, one of my big time jazz inspirations. One guy that I really like how he plays, very soulful. And this is just like a, a classic soulful record. So I saw it, had to pick it up. I picked up the dam, some rare tracks and just demos of an amazing band that I love, so I couldn't resist, and I think you should pick it up too. I enjoy it. And it makes me glad to say, it's been a lovely day and it's okay. I got uh, Blind Willie Nictel, and if you don't know about him, then don't worry about it, but it's very cool. And this is his last known recording. I think he was a source of inspiration for a ton of classic rock and roll, you know, from America and from England, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. If you're going to get hip to it, you really should check out this song, The Dying Crap Shooters Blues. It's unbelievable. Then what? Let a deck of cards be my tombstone. I got the dying crap shooters blues. I went with uh, a Neil Young record live, uh, live from the Fillmore. Usually one of the first places I go in a record store is to the Neil Young section to see if, uh, thanks, there's something that I don't have. And I actually had not seen this, uh, this record before, this recording before, and it's got some classics on it. Hello, cowgirl in the sand. Hello, cowgirl in the sand. Uh, let's see, well, I have a bunch of MC5. This one's a picture disc, kick out the jams. Kick out the jams, motherfucker! Another one that I picked up was very rare. Handmade cover. Got some Wayne Kramer, man. He's an amazing guitar player and just kind of kicks my butt. I love it. Hopefully this gets home in one piece. <laughs> I got uh, this record on this guy's recommendation. Sure. My favorite Pink Floyd shit is the Sid Barrett stuff, so I know I'm gonna trip out on this guy's stuff. Please leave us here. Close our eyes to the octopus This is a classic music from the Big Pink, the band. This is uh, a, an important record to me because it, it was a big bonding record for my dad and I, actually, when I was in high school. We drove around Utah one summer and listened to this basically the whole time. It holds a, an important place in my, my history and it's also just a, you know, it's a seminal record from a very important group. I got some Johnny Shines. He was a Chicago guitar player who played a lot of the uh, chess stuff. Not as famous as Hubert Sumlin and some other guitar players, but as a guitar player, I really dig Johnny Shines' stuff. Well, if they do, it might as well to curse God and die. I went with something a little bit more recent. This guy, Ty Seagal, who's uh, I think pretty popular these days, but I like this record a lot. It sort of reminds me of like T-Rex and stuff like that. I think he's uh, a contemporary dude that's doing pretty cool stuff, which is a rare thing to find. Then I got a Misfit 7-inch, a little rare, rare jammy again live at the Ritz. I remember that that joint. I mean, I don't think I have to go into the Misfits, really, pretty much. I don't think, right? Oh, it's on white vinyl. Thin Lizzy is a, is, a, is a popular band for all of us in the Budos. This uh, recording in particular, I like a lot because the, the live footage of this uh, recording there's a saxophone player on it that the first time we all watched it together, we had to do a triple take because I thought it was me. It looked so much like myself. I mean, it was uncanny. It was really, really, really weird. Like, freaked me out. But it's a cool record, too. I 
Thank you very much for having us. That was fun.